Welcome! This is the Winko Stahl 8 inch Cook's Knife. What I like about this knife is that it has some features which make it an ideal entry level knife. The first one being its price. The others we're going to visit in just a minute. However, as you might expect from its geometry, this extra wide blade, it handles very different. Behaves very, very differently from a standard chef knife. We are going to explore those in depth today. In this video, I'm going to talk about four aspects, four categories. First, I'm going to go over all the features of this knife. Second, I'm going to talk about functionality. How does this knife behave? Third, I'm going to talk about fit and finish. How does this knife look out of the box? And fourth, I'm going to talk about value. Are you getting your money's worth? So let's get started with features. First of all, with Winko knives in general, I'm always impressed by the quality of the materials they use and the quality of the construction as well. Sometimes they don't do great on the details, but the quality of the materials and the overall quality of the construction is impressive. This knife is made of high carbon steel. High carbon steel is a little bit harder than your regular stainless steel. It sharpens easier, it's easier to maintain, and you can get just a little sharper than you would regular stainless steel. The next aspect I want to discuss is the construction method. This knife is advertised as being a stamped steel knife. That's what happens when they take a sheet of metal, they stamp out the form of a knife, and then they sharpen it and place a handle on it. I'm not convinced that's how this made, knife was made. And if it is, in fact, a stamped steel knife, it's a very, very well done one. And here's why I think that's the case. This over here is a stamped steel knife. I want you to look at this. Look at the thickness of this blade. Notice how it stays uniform as I go from the handle all the way up to the tip. The thickness of the blade it stays the same. Now let's look at our Winko knife here. Notice our thickness of the blade, it starts off rather thick. As we go toward the tip, it gets thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner gradually. This is not characteristic of a stamped steel blade. This is what you'd expect from a forged steel knife. Now, I apologize if it is in fact made using that method, but if it is, it is much better than I would expect. This is a very, very good trait. It makes the knife far more flexible in practice. I was very impressed by that. I did not expect this from a $7 knife. This knife, it feels really, really light. Typical chef's knives are a little bit heavier. Now, whether you like your knife heavy or light is a matter of preference. So I will give you an exact weight over here so you know what you're working with. 175 grams, that's where the scale is stabilizing. One advantage of having this wider blade is they have a larger area to brace up against your fingers when using the claw grip. It makes the knife a little bit easier to work with and helps you get used to that posture a little easier, especially when you're cutting into bigger foods. When the knife comes up, it, do it does not scratch up against your fingers like this. It's a lot easier to use in that regard. Let me show you what I mean. We have our carrot here. We're going to cut our little groove into it so it's nice and straight. We're going to bring it up around here. As I slide the knife forward, notice how as I bring it up, because of this extra wide blade, the top of the blade never goes up against my fingers. And I can keep cutting the carrot and notice how easy it is. This knife cuts very, very well. But the top of the knife never goes up and scratches my finger. As opposed to if I were to take my standard chef knife, if I don't pull the knife away and I bring it up, the top of the knife scratches up against here. And over time that could cause some calluses on your fingers. This is not a full tang knife. This is what's referred to as a half tang. You don't see your metal showing at the end of the handle. You don't see metal at the top. This over here is what you'd expect a full tang knife to look like. You see you have your metal coming up all the way around the handle 
and underneath. Connects to the blade. A full tang knife is a lot more durable than a half tang knife. I do not recommend using this knife for any heavyweight tasks, such as cutting through a watermelon with a hard shell. Also, please be careful, don't drop it. These knives don't tend to be as durable as full tang knives. Like I mentioned before, this knife behaves a lot different than your typical chef's knife. And that's because of the geometry of the blade. Now, this is what a chef's knife looks like over here. Here we have the Winko Achero, also an excellent chef knife. And notice the curve in the blade. It's far more pronounced in the Winko stall than it is in your much more conventional Winko Achero knife. This is a smoother transition. This is a sharper one. Now this makes a very, very, very big difference in practice. When you're slicing, the knife rocks much easier when your transition is smoother. As opposed to here, when you're rocking your knife, you feel resistance. As you push the tip forward, you're almost pushing down and the angle which you're pushing, the knife, it just feels like you're doing so much more work. Moving on, the handle. When I first got this knife, I thought the handle was awkward. It felt a little bit strange to uh, hold and it felt a little uncomfortable to be frank at first. However, after I've used it for several days, I kind of like it. I got used to it and I, it actually feels much more comfortable than your conventional handle, this one over here. I mean, this one's comfortable, but this molded handle, it feels a little bit better. A drawback of this knife, unfortunately, is its uh, balance. Ideally, the balancing point for a knife would be right over here, where my index finger is. Right at the point at which you're holding it. But as you can see with this knife, it sits forward. Our balancing point is actually about over here. Now it is pretty close to the handle. So as long as you're holding your knife in your pinch grip over here, it feels pretty good. Ideally, it would have been a little bit further back than it is. That said, this knife is really light. So it's unlikely to make a big impact for you. This knife is not ready to use out of the box, uh, especially the sharpening. When I looked at the profile of the edge, I noticed it was very, very uneven. Some areas, particularly the front, they were a little wider. Some areas in the back, they were really narrow. One side was narrower cut than the other. The bevel was not very well done. And I tried to use this knife right out of the box and I noticed it was slipping. It was not cutting well. It was slipping, it was getting stuck. I had a lot of issues with it. If your knife is like mine, I recommend you give it a good sharpening beforehand. There's some great uh, sharpening stones on Tiger Chef that will do the job very well. I have some videos on those as well. I recommend using one of those to redo the bevel on your edge, both sides, and it makes the knife a million times better. Having this knife very, very, very sharp is important, much more so than with other knives. Because as I mentioned earlier, when you're chopping with it, you feel resistance over here as you rock the knife because of its geometry. This area, you need to sharpen very well. If this area is not sharp, that resistance is gonna be even more significant. As I've seen with other Winko knives, the etching here is highly abrasive. Again, if this were to come in contact with your fingers, it would cause a lot of discomfort. But fortunately, because of its wide blade, it doesn't seem to be an issue because this etching rarely touches your fingers. So really, the only fit and finish issue with this knife is the bevel. It will need to be reprofiled and resharpened. Otherwise, I did not see any scratches on the blade. Everything was polished to mirror finish. I see some minor imperfections in the handle over here, if you can tell on the camera. But again, these are just cosmetic and not a concern. So fin and finish wise, this knife scores great. Value is where this knife shines. It only costs seven dollars. Seven dollars. Now that is a bargain. Most department stores, you'll be looking at at least $10 for an entry level knife, and it's not gonna have the same quality as this. You're not gonna find one with a carbon steel blade like this. 
you'll find some cheap stainless steel bottom of the barrel knife. The blade alone on this is worth the $7, which is not a lot. It's a great price. It's a great price for an entry level knife. To sum things up, if you're looking for an entry level knife, and you don't mind missing out on a couple of the more advanced features like having a good balance or having a full tang, then this might be a good choice for you. If you only plan to use it occasionally, a couple times a day, it's not going to make a big difference not having those features. On the other hand, if you want something that's a little bit better, if you want the balance, if you want the full tang, Winko makes some other knives. The Winko Achero, for instance, is an excellent choice. The Winko Achero for only $3 more will give you some of those advanced features. But if you're okay doing without, then this will be a perfect uh, bargain deal. I hope this review was helpful. If you have questions, please let me know in the comments section and I will do my best to answer them.